right guys, today I'm going to go over uh, just four quick tips and tricks on what to look for when you're choosing whether or not to take your small boat or your kayak or any boat out on the water. So you don't come out here on the day that looks like this and it's blowing 10 knots and there's a small craft advisory. But anyway, stay tuned, I'm going to hop on my computer and I'm going to show you what I look for every time before I go out. Alright guys, thanks so much for joining me today. I'm going to be going over what I look for when I take my porta boat out. It's a small boat, so if you have a kayak or any small boat, this is going to be really uh, informative um, and important for you to, to take into account these factors when you're deciding whether or not to go out on a specific day. So the first thing I check is going to be just a simple weather report. I use Weather Underground. You can use whatever weather app you want, but essentially what I typically look for is going to be the high temperature for the day, and it'll tell me you know, what I want to wear and what I want to bring. Um, then I hop into the hourly here, and the hourly is really convenient because you can see the wind by hour, which I find to be extremely helpful. For example, today is probably going to be relatively calm all day, but if I look at tomorrow, we'll get a better understanding of why I like to use it per hour. Here we can see that if I if I were to launch at 6 or 7 a.m., um, it's going to be pretty low winds at around 7 miles per hour. But then 8 or 9, it starts to pick up. It's 9, 11. Then by noon, it's at 15. So if I were to go out tomorrow, which I'm not planning on doing, you're going to want to take into account the fact that the wind's going to pick up around noon. So you'll want to probably plan to be closer to the harbor by then or be done fishing by then. Um, just keep that in mind. Uh, and uh, the last thing you want to check here on the weather report are going to be these active advisories. Um, you can press this see more button and you get some extremely detailed information around, you know, what National Weather Service has put out. And we can see that there's going to be a high surf advisory and it'll tell you, you know, this is going to last from 3 p.m. Um, it, it's in effect until 3 p.m. on Monday. And it'll give you some more information, the what, the where, the when, and, you know, the, the key takeaways here. It's dangerous for swimming and surfing. Um, there's also going to be a wind advisory and a gale warning. So, yeah, there's a lot of advisories out right now. It's the middle of January here in the Bay Area, and ocean conditions have not been nice to us since, you know, the start of this new year. So definitely something to keep in mind. Essentially, if you see any of these active advisories, um, if it's... If it's ocean related, then it's probably a deal breaker. So any high surf, any high wind, um, any small craft advisories, definitely you don't want to go out during those. Weather aside, the next thing I like to check is the tides. I like to check the tides uh, for two main reasons. Um, first off, the spot that I launch from is uh, not really accessible during a peak high tide. So I just want to try and plan my day around the high tide to make sure I'm either launching before it or after it. Um, and then the second thing is that these big changes here compared to these smaller ones, the smaller ones uh, move a lot less water and the bigger ones move a ton of water. So if you're entering and exiting the harbor, just keep that into account. Um, you know, if the tide's going out pretty heavily, if you're you know, if it's two or three and, and it's around, you know, this part where the tide's dropping pretty drastically and you're trying to make it back in the harbor, just know it's going to take you longer. And, you know, if you are if you have a kayak, you might have to pedal a lot harder or, or paddle a lot harder in order to get, you know, into the harbor. So just keep that in mind and uh, you guys should be just fine. The next thing you're going to want to check here is going to be a swell report. Magic Seaweed's super popular, so I know I can recommend it. I've used it uh, with success. But essentially, you can just type in where you're going to be fishing. This one's at the, it's called the Princeton Jetty, which is essentially just the uh, right where that harbor is at Half Moon. Here you can see it on the map. Um, and it'll tell you there's a primary swell about 5 feet every 23 seconds, but then there's also a secondary swell that's also 5 feet at 13. So what does this mean? So a, a swell height is measured in feet typically or a, a unit of distance. And um, a 5 foot swell means that the waves are going to be 5 feet tall. And this interval here, 23 seconds, is going to be how far apart those waves are. So for example... The primary swell is going to be a five foot wave and you're going to see about one wave every 23 seconds. Um, and so what you want to look for is lower swells and longer intervals. That's the most ideal for being out in the boat. As you can see, 
this um, this surf height graph is very useful to, for determining the the swell heights when you're deciding whether or not to go out. Um, so if we look at tomorrow at 9 a.m., if I wanted to go out, I'd take this information into account. There's going to be a nine and a half foot swell approximately, so a 10 foot wave almost. That's pretty high, and it is coming in at 18 seconds, but with a 10 foot wave. I'm not going out. Anything under five is is what I look for, and I like an interval closer to 20 seconds here. Um, that would be ideal, not always necessary, depending on the wave height. So, for example, on Wednesday, um, they only have, if we look here, just noon on Wednesday. I don't know why this likes to move around on me. On noon on Wednesday, there's a two and a half foot swell, which is pretty small, and it's coming in at 17 seconds, which is long enough for me. And I would consider that to be good swell conditions. Um, but this isn't, you know, the only thing to take into account. You're also going to look at the tides and the weather. But that aside, um, those are like the three core things that you should always take into account when you're when you're going out to actually, you know, decide whether or not you want to take your your boat or your vessel out. Um, the last thing though that I look at is my secret weapon. It's live cam footage. So this one here is of Pacifica Pier, and I think it's bar none the most valuable resource you can have um, when you're deciding whether or not to go fishing. Luckily, here in the Bay Area, we have a lot of live cams. Uh, I'm sure any popular boating and fishing spots will have some live cam set up. They're becoming more popular, and this one in particular, you can see the, the Pacifica Pier. I know it's a very popular fishing spot here in the Bay and uh, you can look and see exactly what conditions are going to be like because this has been updated you know this is only a minute ago so you know that this is this is accurate and uh, you know that this is what you're going to expect when you go out there so today you can see these swells are five to six feet tall maybe even larger and they're crashing pretty heavily against the uh, jetty the pier there so definitely don't want to be going out in these conditions you can see how rough it looks out there and the winds blowing pretty substantially there's this flagpole here that lets you see that and there's also two other views you have one of the beach right in right to the south of the pier and then one of you know a, a larger landscape picture of, the, of that same beach south of the pier so this is an invaluable resource in my opinion but one thing to keep in mind is that half moon is actually a little bit more protected so sometimes it is super rough here in pacifica and it, it should be slightly better in half moon so what i use for that is and uh, this one's called the just if you type in pacifica live cam it'll show up but here is the actual uh, name of the video when i check for um, half moon bay i also like to look at this this is from the ritz carlton which is a few miles south of the harbor you can see the harbors here in the distance um, but you can tell that these waves are significantly uh, smaller but it's still relatively rough um, so just keep that in mind anyways these two live cams i think are extremely important in, in deciding whether or not I'm going to go out. If you have live cams in your area, I highly recommend taking a look at them. Um, and these aren't the only live cams available. They don't always have to be on YouTube like these ones are. These ones are nice and easily accessible, but there's also smaller picture cams. So for example, here's one from Sam's Chowder House. Sam's Chowder House is right next to the harbor. So this is Half Moon Bay's harbor. And if I zoom in for you guys, you can actually see these are updated every 10 seconds. So this will give you a good idea of how the harbor looks and you can even see out into the ocean a little bit. Unfortunately, since they are pictures, you can't really quite tell you know, how big the swell is and how quick the interval is, but they update every 10 seconds so you know that this is going to be um, accurate data in determining whether or not today's going to be a good day to go out. I also like to look at just how many people are out here. Here you can see there's, you know, probably a couple hundred people. You can see them out in the jetty. Here right now you can see that there's actually a wave crashing over the jetty. So you know that even though it looks pretty calm out there, it, it actually is quite rough. And I was, I was out there last night. I can tell you that the waves are no joke right now. So just keep that in mind. Be safe, guys. And uh, the last one, live cam I wanted to show you today is from the Bay. And this is... Board Sports California. They actually have two live cams where their shops are. And if we scroll down, they have an Alameda live cam. So these refresh every two minutes. They're not going to be as um, 
up to date, but it'll still give you a good idea of what conditions are like in the bay. Today you can see that it's a very nice flat and calm day. It's not always the case in the bay, so take advantage of these days when you get them. Um, so there's two for Alameda here, and then there's also one that's actually very close to where I'm at, and this is in San Mateo, and it's just north of Coyote Point. You just look up Board Sports California on Google Maps, you'll probably find the exact location of this camp, but you can see that the water level is pretty high right now and it's nice and calm. So this is essentially what I look for and you know I hope it helps you guys a lot. Um, definitely if you see any of these active weather alerts, please, please take them into account. Um, I've gone out in small craft advisories and I, I tell you right now I won't be going back out again. Um, but if you can get live footage, it will definitely help you guys make a good decision on whether or not it's, it's worth it to go driving down to the ocean. But thanks so much for watching, guys. Um, I hope this helped, and I'll catch you in the next video.